Hi, it's Teresa from Dodge Nature Center, and time for another Nature to Go. It's a familiar scene this time of year, blooming flowers, busy with bees and other kinds of pollinators. It's a symbiotic relationship where each party benefits from the other. The pollinators get food while the flowers get pollinated. And to guarantee as much pollination as possible, flowers use several strategies to draw in pollinators. There's fragrance. Scent will attract certain pollinators, especially bees. Think of things like roses and lilacs. Even the wild cucumbers that are blooming right now smell wonderful. Scientists have figured out that honeybees sense of smell is about 100 times more sensitive than humans sense of smell. So it's worth the time and energy for the plants to produce flowers that smell good. Next, there's color. Large patches of color are easier for insects to locate. But what bees see is not what we see. Scientists have determined that bees can see light at the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. So insects see the flowers in a very different light, literally. And then there's a third approach, and it's aimed especially at bees. With lots of bees collecting lots of nectar and pollen, there's a problem. The bees don't want to waste energy going to flowers with no nectar. It's a matter of using their energy efficiently. So how do they find nectar-filled flowers? Well, that's where the third approach comes in. The plants interact with the bees electrically. Yes, I said electrically. When bees fly, they build up a positive electric charge. This most likely is caused by friction, kind of like when you walk across carpeting in wintertime and static electricity builds up. Meanwhile, the flowers have a negative charge. It's not equal throughout the plant, the charge is stronger on the parts of the plant that stick out from the center of the plant. As the bee approaches the flower, it can sense the electrical charge. How does the bee sense the charge of the plant? Well, it depends on the kind of bee. Fuzzy bumblebees are covered with tiny hairs. Those hairs wiggle in response to the flower's negative charge. On the other hand, Honeybees, it's their antennas that quiver in response to the charge. So sensing the charge, the bee moves in. When we say the flower is negatively charged, that includes the pollen. Since opposites attract, the pollen, which is negatively charged, jumps to the bee's positively charged body. Kind of like when styrofoam sticks to your hands and you can't get rid of it. The bees scrape the pollen off their body and put it into baskets on their legs. And now the pollen becomes positively charged. So when the bee goes to the next flower, which remember is negatively charged, some of the positively charged pollen jumps to that flower and that allows pollination to happen. But we're not done. Because after a bee has been to a plant, the charges on the plant are weakened for a short time, around a minute. The next bee to show up isn't going to feel its hairs or its antenna quivering, and so it knows to skip that flower since the nectar has been depleted. The bee flies off to find food somewhere else, saving energy along the way. Flowers. We appreciate them because they're beautiful and they can smell wonderful, but the next time you're in your garden or by a blooming prairie, be sure to look a little closer. There's a lot more going on than meets the eye. Thanks for joining me for this week's Nature to Go, and we'll talk to you again next time.